Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. This morning I'm going to share the miracle is in the vessel. Uh, The reason uh, that I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to share this is because next week, we have an anointing service. At the end of every 21-day fast, we have an anointing service. You say, what's an anointing service, Pastor? It's where you get anointed with oil. And uh, Isaiah 10, 27 says that the anointing lifts a heavy burden and breaks the yoke of bondage off, off, off of people. So if you're burdened in any way, if you have a yoke of bondage on you. It's going to be broken off you in the name of Jesus. If you're sick, if you're diseased in your body, if you've been fighting things in your body, say, next week when I come here and that anointing oil touches me, I'm going to be set free. I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be delivered. And listen, it doesn't matter what is wrong with you. God will just heal you anyway. God will just do something in your life anyway. The Word of God says, according to your faith, be it unto you. So you start believing now for a mighty move of God in your life. Be expectant. Paul says in Philippians 1.20 in the Amplified Bible, he has an eager, expect, uh, an eager desire and persistent expectation a persistent expectation, a persevering. Nothing will stop me getting to the place that God wants me to be. Nothing will stop His healing power coming on me. No doubts in my mind will stop me or nothing that's happened in my family or nothing. That No hindrance will stop me getting what God has for me. Amen. We've got to be resolute. We've got to be determined that these are the things that's happened. Uh, uh, Charles Finney says, we've got to pray till a desire comes in our heart. It's like Psalm 37, 4, when we delight in the Lord, He gives us the desires of our heart. He gives us the desires to desire. When the Holy Spirit has put a desire on you and you are so desirous of getting free from what has been stopping you, the bondages of life, you're going to have such expectation that when you pray the prayer of faith, nothing will be withheld from you because that desire has caused you to already see the answer. Wow. You already see the answer, and whatever you can see, you can have. Isn't that powerful? (laughs) Amen. So the miracle is in the vessel. And this is a message, and it's about empowerment for the next generation. It's about empowering people for the next generation. I'm going to read from... 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go, borrow it, go, go, what a powerful word, go, borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few, and when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said, there's not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and he said, 
go sell the oil and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. God is interested in us paying off our debt. Amen. So, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you help me to share this word. I'm thanking you for the anointing in this word today, Holy Spirit, that people that hear the word, they have ears to hear what your spirit is saying to them. Open hearts and open ears, open minds. Lord, I declare that no hindering spirit will hinder the free flow of your word in this place today in Jesus' name. So many times we need a miracle. And the miracle is most of the time not the problem. God is looking for a vessel to work his miracles through. God is looking for a vessel to work his miracles through. Oral Roberts says, miracles are coming all the time towards you. They're coming past you. You're just not catching your miracle. So miracles are something that God does and does all the time. The woman's husband died. And when he died, the, in those days, the creditors came to the door to enslave the children. The, the, they wanted the children, and those children would work in the fields until the debt was play, paid off. Uh, so it's like the spirit of the world is at the door of the church, is at the door of our homes to take our children and our grandchildren. And if we don't have a miracle in the house, if we don't have oil in the house, if we don't have the Holy Spirit in the house, there is a spirit of the world coming to enslave the next generation. The spirit of the world, the spirit of this age, the Bible calls it, is coming to enslave the next generation. Mercy. Mercy. That spirit is coming through drugs, promiscuity, hopelessness, alcohol, just whatever is coming in to enslave our children, to, to steal our children's minds. Not only our children's minds, but to steal our minds. To steal the, the free flow of thought the free thought process that God has giving us, given us, the creativity that's in our life, is, the enemy's out to steal all that. He's out to steal your liberty. This is a message about liberation for people here today. Yes. Amen. So the key to the next generation staying free, the prophet said, what do you have in your house? Do you have anything that God can use to send a miracle? What do you have in your house? Do you have something God can use? God is just looking for something he can use. And that, that can be you. What do you have to save your next generation from hell? Our homes should be places of prayer where the word is read on a daily basis where the Holy Spirit is given his place and where there is honor and respect and unity, where there's honor for your parents, where there's honor and respect for your brother and your sister, for your grandmother. Uh, you know, I, I go into uh, an old age home on a regular basis. I was in an old age home yesterday and uh, I was speaking to this lady, a, a lovely lady from, from Co-Winning, but she doesn't even know where she lived in Co-Winning anymore uh, just because of dementia. But she got two children. She, never, she hasn't seen her daughter for 25 years. And her son lives near, uh, she couldn't tell me where, but he lives near. But she, she said, and I knew she was saying it out of hopefulness, he comes to visit me from time to time. So the, the, there's no honor for the, the parentage. There's no honor for the, the line in which uh, where, where that, the, 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 the woman that birthed those ch children into the world. Her husband died a long time ago. Uh, but 
this is the situation that we need honor and respect and, uh, 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 and all those things that uh, the enemy would use to hinder a miracle. To stop the flow of it, you think, ah, well, my friends say that my folks are just trying to stop me having fun. All these things that they tell me to do, it's just so as I can't have fun and just do what I want. I want to live without boundaries. What a shock. Uh -huh. The miracle is not in the oil. The miracle's in the vessel. God is looking for vessels that will contain miracle. You see, the miracle she received freed her sons from the, 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 the bondage. The prophet told her to go and borrow vessels, not a few. You determine the magnitude of your miracle. God doesn't, you do. So if you only go and gather just a few small jars or a, a few small vessels, you're only expecting something small from God. But God says through his prophet, go and gather all that you can get, every vessel available, and bring them in, and I'll fill everything that you bring. If you, if you go out and empty, get empty vessels, I'll fill those empty vessels with miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, it's, it's, the, problem is not, it, the problem is not with the oil. It's dependent on what you will give God. If you only give God 350 milliliters like a can of iron brew or a can of coke and say, well, that's all I'm prepared to give him. You know, I'm prepared to come to church once every two months or once every month or once every two weeks or, 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 or I may come in a... Once a week on a Sunday, but that's all I'm doing. I'm not going to do midweek stuff. I'm not going to give any of myself to ushering or helping or volunteering in any way. No, no, I think that's just enough for God. Well, that's a, you're not gathering much. God is limited by what you give him. You don't just give me a few. Give me all you've got. Amen? This, this isn't a message of condemnation. It's a message to open your heart up, to open your spirit up to receive miracles that will, that will change the next generation. You see, if you're married and you've procreated and you have a child, your responsibility is no longer to you yourself. It's now you're responsible for the next generation. You're responsible for that child and all the... the, the, the children that they bring into the world. So, if you say, well, I'm only prepared to do this, but God is saying, I'm looking for people that will yield totally to me, that will consecrate themselves afresh to me, that will dedicate their, their lives to me, that will be determined to go further than they've ever gone before, that will be determined to trust me and open up to me so that I can f pour into their lives all that I have got for them. God wants to pour out His oil into your life so that you can be a container for, of miracles for Him. Yes. Amen. You see, he wants to pour his thoughts into your life. In Proverbs 16, he says, if you will commit your way to me, I will cause my thoughts to become as your thoughts. But that's after committing our way to him. So the thoughts that we would have then are thoughts that God puts there, and that's thoughts that tend to plenteousness. You'll think the thoughts of God then. You'll think, those pure thoughts. That you'll look at people and you'll think, what is good and what is pure and what is honest about them? What can I say that will encourage them today? Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise offering in this church. You see, 
If you say, Lord, use me as you see fit, then God keeps pouring into your life. You say, just use me, Lord, whatever. My will is to do your will. Let your will be done in my life. My life is your life. I live because of you. I was walking this morning. When I walk in the morning, I thank God for the breath in my lungs. I thank God for eyes to see. I thank God to hear that I can hear the birds. I can hear the cars. I can hear all, the, all of that. I can, I can walk unhindered. I, I, I can, I, I just, what, my heart beats strongly. The, the blood flows through my veins. I thank God for all of those things. And then I say, Lord, I can only do this because of you. Lord, I just consecrate myself to you again today. I consecrate myself to God on a daily basis. Dedicate myself and dedicate my life to God on a daily basis. I dedicate myself uh, to the work of the ministry. I dedicate uh, my family. To, uh, they've got to dedicate themselves as well, but I dedicate them and I cover them in prayer on a daily basis. Are you with me? We, we, we're doing something so that we can get an infilling. So uh, the, the prophet says, uh, so God is saying, if you give me all that you are, I will fill you with all my purpose, all my dreams, all my plans, all my oil, and all my anointing. I'll fill you with that. All those things that you need, I'll fill you with it. You're scratching around looking for the way in life, but if you will just listen to me and yield to me, I'll give you the plans and I'll give you the purposes and, and the pursuits to go after. And everything that you do, I will cause to pos prosper. Just the way he said it to Joshua in Joshua 1. So when the oil is moving, get some vessels. But when she started moving, God began to pour and pour. When you make that decision, God will start to pour. God will start to pour. You start to move and God will start to pour. You get, you, you get those uh, containers, those vessels, and you're pouring and you're thinking, wow, this is never going to stop. This is never going to stop. Just pouring, glug, 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 glug. Wow, it's just going on. Get more, get more. Oh, and they're just pouring and pouring and it's just filling up and filling up. And, and then all of a sudden, where's the vessels? No, there isn't any left, mum. There's none left. End of, not even a drip. It just stops because there are no more vessels. So we got to prepare our vessel. You see, heaven is not the problem. The problem is available vessels. As long as God can find available vessels, that oil will keep flowing. And when, it's, when it stops, there's no place to put it. God is looking for more vessels. He's looking for a thousand people like Josh ministered to over a thousand people. That was all vessels that were being prepared. 368 people made a, a decision to become vessels. I yield my life to you, Lord. I'm dying to self. All that I am is for you, Lord. From this day on, I live for you. How many of you said that? How many of you have had your vessel clogged or blocked? Or it's, 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 it's like a, a, a car engine, you know, if, if that filter gets blocked, if, if, if that flow of oil around the engine gets blocked, then you're going to have problems. So the container is as important as the product. If I said to you, uh, do you want some tea? You say, yeah. And I got a hot iron there of tea and I just came and I said, now open your hands and I start pouring the tea. You see, the container is as important as the product. The container, uh, no, uh, you don't want tea, you want a cup of tea. You want something to hold that tea because the, the, the tea on its own is going to do damage, but the tea in a cup, is going to bless you. Isn't that right? So the containers is a, as, as, as important as the oil that God is sending out. 
Are you with me? So the, the container is important. We need to have the right container. So du during this 21 days of, of, of fasting, uh, I suppose many of you have been like that, uh, that you've struggled with me in this fast. There's times where uh, your, your stomach thinks your throat's cut and uh, you want to start biting your fingernails and then keep going and eating your fingers. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's how it gets sometimes. You just get so hungry. It's just the appetites of the flesh. But I tell you that you can, you can overcome that by just going and praying. You can just go and pray and say, Holy Spirit, Give me the strength to do that. But what am I doing during that? I'm emptying myself. I'm emptying myself, divesting myself of those things that rule me. You see, the, the Bible says it's food for the stomach, not stomach, your stomach for food. Uh, you know, you, we, the, 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 we, we don't, we eat to live, we don't live to eat. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> oh, See, that's good preaching, Pastor. You were preaching to me there. <laughs> so, <laughs> sometimes you don't look at the faces. But anyway, the, that's the truth. It's the truth anyway, you know. So we've got to uh, divest ourselves of these desires. My wife can tell you I haven't looked at the TV since, the, since we decided in the fast. I said, I'm not watching that thing. And I haven't watched that thing one moment since, since we started. I'm not saying that to boast, but it, it's, it's like, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. You hear what I'm saying? So we get caught up in, in things. You just hear one thing, and all of a sudden, your brain's gone on that thing for hours. And maybe if, it, if it's something really emotional, it, you can be gone on it for a day or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to divest yourself of some of these things that stop the cleansing or the emptying of your vessel. Because only to the extent that you empty yourself can you be filled. Isn't that right? So... Heaven is not the problem. The supply of oil is not the problem. It's the available vessels that's the problem. It's not the container that gives value to the product. It's the product that gives value to the container. It's like uh, 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 when you go into the grocery store and you, you buy... Uh, stuff at Tesco's, it's not the plastic bag that's any value. That You might get charged a penny or something for the plastic bag, but it's the product that's put in the plastic bag that's got value. Isn't that right? And, and you need that so you don't drop your stuff all over the way out of the shop to get to the, the car. So it's the product that gives value to the container. God has the oil, but the Holy Spirit is looking for a container to hold that oil. The vessel needs to be empty and clean. You know, I, I used to be a milk boy and uh, used to go around. This is when they had milk bottles and people delivered your milk. And uh, I used to go around and uh, you, you, you put the full bottles down, you put your fingers in and lift the empty ones and this is when you used to get cream on milk. That's where cream comes from. It used to come from milk, you understand? And you put your fingers in there and all of a sudden, ugh, this woman doesn't clean her milk bottles. <laughs> so the woman got a reputation for dirty milk bottles. <laughs> but you, we, we got to clean the vessels. So when those vessels were taken away, they were taken and sterilized because you don't put clean oil into dirty bottles. You don't put clean oil into a dirty engine. You clean the engine filters and everything at the same time so that you're, you get maximum benefit from the oil. You see, God is looking for those clean containers so that he can put in his vision his, he, he'll restore your dreams. He, he wants to 
have signs and wonders and, and miracles. He wants to pour in His power, and He wants to, you to empty yourself so that you can be a container for His power. Amen. Glory to the… Somebody give God a praise offering. In Genesis 1.26, the Bible says that uh, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God made man out of the dust of the earth. Uh, he made humans. In Latin, the word for human is the spir means spirit in dirt. It means spirit in dirt, okay? So we are spirits in dirt. Don't look at your neighbor and say you're a spirit in dirt. It's the spirit that God breathed into man that gives him life. And the spirit has to live in a dirt body. You see, in that dirt body, God gave Adam dominion and authority over every creature, including the serpent, and you have, because of Adam, you have, a, uh, and he said, you have authority over the serpent. So, God only gives dominion to spirits in dirt bodies. He legally had to do it that way so that he could redeem mankind. When our body goes back to the dirt, our spirit lives on. It doesn't die. Our spirit is eternal. It lives on forever. Legally, for God to come to earth and take back dominion, he had to come in a dirt body. And there was 42 generations between the fall of man and the incarnation. But God kept searching, and he found this little virgin Jewish girl. And he saw, here's a way that I, the God of the universe, where the earth is, is my footstool, where I can shrink myself down into this tiny little seed and plant myself inside the womb of a, a tiny little virgin girl and become flesh. And uh, uh, so he went to this little Jewish girl and he says, can I borrow your body for nine months? I need, to, I need a container to legally bring my son into the world. Amen? So, nine months later, we have the incarnation. And, and, and that's where this big, lovingly, heavenly Father God came as a seed and grew in that little lady's womb and put a miracle in that little vessel. But Jesus was God from head to toe. Even at seven and a half pounds, as he grew up, he knew his authority and he knew his dominion. Even if someone touched the hem of his garment, they would be healed. And in Luke 4, 17, the Bible says, he went when he was old enough, he went and the, uh, the Bible says in Luke 4, 17, and he went to the, the temple, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery to the, to the blind, to, of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. God, in the form of Jesus, stood in that temple and he read what he had authored and all the demons in hell got such a fright because they knew that he had legally came on earth and he could legally take back what that which was lost. That's why Herod freaked out and wanted to kill all the children two years and under because the, the Satan was so mad that Jesus had found a way to legally come back into the world system so that we could be set free from the bondage of Satan, sin, and death. 
poverty and, and be released and back into his kingdom forever. Amen. So Jesus, uh, our God, needed a container to get his anointing back into the world. Amen. That's why he's looking for vessels. He's looking for vessels. That's why Satan hates your body. You see, he can't do anything about the oil. The oil comes from heaven. So he tries to dirty up and defile your vessel so it cannot contain the oil. That's why young men and young women and other people in this place that uh, the Satan's always coming at you. He's saying, no, have sex from 10 years old or 11 years old or whatever it is. It's okay. Give your virginity to anyone you want. Or young men, just go and sow your wild oats wherever you want. No, what you're doing is defiling the vessel. You won't have those miracles. You won't have those signs and wonders. You won't live a power-filled life if you give yourself away to any person that walks down the street. I was going to say something else there, but <laughs> old things have passed away. All things have become brand new. So the enemy's out to dirty your vessel. God is looking for clean, pure vessels, but that Satan is out to stop you, and he's out to to sully that vessel. He's out to do whatever he can to stop you being used. And you say, well, I can still be used, you know, God's mercy, God's grace, and all of that. And that is true. But I tell you what, there's something goes on between your brain, or between your ears, even with God's mercy, even with God's grace, there's something nagging there. It's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren, and he comes day and night. He comes 24-7 to go before God and accuse you for things that you have done in the flesh. But I want to tell you, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. And the only way you can get to that place where the accuser of the brethren doesn't accuse you is to be before God and worship because God will seek those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. You've got to be there in spirit. You've got to know that you can declare the blood of Jesus over your conscience and your conscience will be washed from defiling dead works that defiled your brain. God has done that. He covered that with his son Jesus when he sent him on earth. That's why we have so much to be grateful for, for the liberating power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm not the only one standing, sitting, or whatever position you're in in this place today with thoughts in your brain of things that you've done in the past. But I tell you, you need to use the blood. You need to apply the blood to your conscience so that those dead works are washed away so that you can cleanse your vessel, so that you can stand before God pure and say, Lord, pour all you've got into me. I'm, I'm just dev making myself devoid of anything of me and anything of this world. I want you, Lord, and I want all that you've got for me so that I can bring back to this earth what you want on this earth that many shall be saved, this, that people will be multiplied into your kingdom, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, when Satan thought, well, I have to get rid of this body, I have to get rid of this vessel, so after 33 and a half years, he hung him on a tree, hung him on a tree and crucified him and pierced him and pierced his hands and and saw the blood flow from that body. And Jesus said on that cross, it is finished. And Satan thought, and all hell thought, we've got them now. The vessel's been destroyed. There's no more way that the anointing and the miracles can come from heaven. We've destroyed the vessel. But Jesus he borrowed a tomb from a, a rich man. He borrowed it because he knew he wasn't going to use it for long. He was only going to have a 72-hour lease on it. And, and he says, 
great. Now my spirit leaves my body. I'm going to hell for a revival. We're going to have revival meetings there and I'm going to take the keys of hell and death. He took the keys of, of hell and death. Satan doesn't even have a key to his, in, to his own house. He can't even get back into his own house because Jesus has the key and he gave us the key. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Somebody let Jesus know you love him in this place. So, he came back and he came back 72 hours later and connected with the container. Amen. And when the disciples went there, there was no container left in that tomb. He, was now, he just picked up the container and went on from where he left off. You see, you don't have to allow Satan to control your body. You see, when, when, when Mary got pregnant, she got full of Jesus. And there's two things that happens when you get pregnant, when, you, when you're empty and you, you start to get full. You know, there's pregnant ladies in here and you watch over the months then they just start and they walk different. Do you know what I'm saying? So their, their walk's different. When you're pregnant with the anointing, your walk is different. You won't do the things that you did before. You won't walk the same paths as you walked before. And the second thing is pregnant women don't fill themselves with junk. They don't fill themselves with, with smoke. They don't fill themselves with alcohol. They don't fill themselves with drugs. Normal pregnant people don't do that. Okay, I, I just think I have to qualify that. Not everyone is as is, is wise, but we need to help people. We're here to help people, amen? Because it defiles the child that's inside you. So you're defiling another vessel. So don't defile your vessel and, and don't damage the miracle that you're carrying. We are all carrying a miracle. You're pregnant with this seed today. Don't defile that miracle. The Bible says that keep your heart, Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. You see, we shouldn't get involved with trash. We need to get involved with the treasure. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6.19, this is, this is awesome. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives where? In you and was given to you by God. You don't belong to yourself for God has bought you with a high price. You see, the container. You see, when Jesus says, it is finished, he didn't say, I am finished. He said, it is finished. Amen? He didn't say, I am finished. He says, it is finished. Satan's dominion up till that time was finished. Satan's rule was finished. But Jesus says, he didn't say, I'm finished. So we're bought with a price, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was the highest price that could be paid for us. Amen? And that's what lives in us. The Bible says that the same spirit that in Romans 8, 11, that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens our mortal body. I thank God for the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that separates me from the law of sin and death. I thank God for all that he's given me. And, and, two, and finishing with this, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. We, we now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. We're like fragile clay jars. So we got to protect the body. You got to protect your container. You got to protect your mind. You got to protect your spirit. You got to protect your flesh. Don't do things that will damage your flesh knowledgeably. Uh, we'll have accidents, but 
we see what happened with Grant and Michael. They got protected in that accident because they'd given their lives over to Jesus. Amen? So, today I'd like you to reflect on that because as we prepare for, uh, for the anointing service next week, empty yourself those things that have been troubling you, those things that have been a habit in your life that you're struggling with, I tell you, when you empty yourself, God will fill you. Amen? He'll fill you with His Spirit. He'll fill you with that anointing. He'll fill you with a new authority. He'll fill you with new power. He'll fill you. He'll, he'll do a refreshing in your life. He'll press that uh, refresh button. You know how in your computer sometimes you just need to press the refresh button? God will press that refresh button in your life and you'll be refreshed. You'll have new ideas, new dreams, new hopes, new future, new vision, and you'll go forward with a new courage and a, a, a new knowledge that those dreams that God has put in your heart, uh, they are dreams that will surely come to pass. Amen. Just like God said to the widow woman, gather all these empty vessels so that you and your household can be free of debt. The world system nowadays has got our children's children in debt because our government has borrowed so much money. But I want to tell you, even in the circumstance, you can be free of the circumstance because God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.